All right, guys, let's talk screens because the screens of tablets are not all created equal. Some are made of glass, some are made of plastic composites, some of them have a touchscreen interface that is completely invisible, like the iPad 2 as well as the Galaxy Tab. Others, you can actually see the touchscreen interface overlay when it's in certain lights, and it can be a little bit distracting, especially when trying to use the tablet outdoors. The ASUS ePad Transformer actually has a Gorilla Glass on the front, as I mentioned before, so it's going to be the most scratch-proof out of any of the tablets in front of us here today. Now, in terms of viewing angles, I just want to pick each one up and show you guys how the viewing angles are. So these are all on full brightness. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take it down as low as I can. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go from the side so you guys can see the viewing angle. So that's the iPad 2. Next, I'm going to take the Toshiba Thrive. So we're going to start down nice and low. I want you guys to have a look at the color reproduction there. And then from the side. So this isn't scientific by any stretch of the imagination, but what I'm hoping is that it will give you guys some idea of how usable these various screens are going to be in different usage conditions. Now, with a tablet, 99% of the time, you're going to be looking straight at it. But let's say there's a scenario where you and a friend are both looking at the tablet and you would both like to enjoy the content. Hey, might be useful to have a, a pretty decent viewing angle on it. Now, in terms of brightness and color accuracy, I can actually declare an outright winner in those particular categories. The Samsung Galaxy Tab has the most beautiful, most rich colors, and compared to the iPad 2, it's pretty close, but compared to the others, it also has the brightest screen. So for our battery test, I realize this is hardly perfect, but I started playing the epic Sax Guy 10 hour video on YouTube on all these tablets all at the same time. Now you can see the iPad 2 and the Galaxy Tab 10.1 are both a little bit further in the playback than the others because they did manage to buffer and load it faster than the other tablets, significantly faster in some cases actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them all and I'm going to put them all in full screen mode in high quality. Now bearing in mind this is only I believe a 480 video but I couldn't find anything that long that was capable of playing back in HD. So we're going to have to settle for this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug all the tablets at the same time. I'm turning all the screen brightnesses up to full. I'm turning all the speakers up to what I would consider a reasonable listening level and we're going to see based on our time-lapse footage, which tablet lasts the longest in terms of battery life. So guys, I realize this is fairly inelegant, but here are the results from my battery life testing. So I've got the Zoom, the Thrive, the Tab 10.1, the iPad 2, and the Transformer. Now my camera automatically breaks the clips, or breaks a long clip into various smaller clips. So I have X's for whenever the tablet actually lasted throughout the entire clip, and then I have times in here for when the tablet stopped and turned off. Now, there's something to note here. Now, for the Tab 10.1, you can see I have a time here as well as here. At 45 minutes and 2 seconds into clip 8, the tab actually went into a special power saving mode that the other tablets did not have. That power saving mode turned the screen brightness way, way down and allowed it to actually outlast even the Motorola Zoom, which was otherwise the longest running Android tablet. The iPad 2 was the winner at 7.38 hours, followed by the Galaxy Tab 10.1 at 6.85, the Motorola Zoom at 6.73, the uh, Transformer at 5.4, and the Toshiba Thrive at 4.7 hours while running YouTube videos and streaming over Wi-Fi. So for the conclusion, I'm pretty much going to let you guys evaluate based on what you saw today, but I am going to give you a quick overview of each of the tablets in turn. So the iPad 2, we already know most of what we, there is to know about this. Dual core processor, beautiful glass screen, beautiful screen, great battery life. Overall, great piece of hardware, very expensive, very proprietary, not much customizability, which leads us into the tablet machines, which are all featuring NVIDIA Tegra 2 technology, which should be noted is better for 3D games. And hey, the benefit that these Android tablets give you is that 
all three of the ones in front of me other than the Tab 10.1 actually have HDMI outputs. So you can not only play your games, your 3D games, on the tablet itself, but you can also play them on a TV by just using HDMI. So that's a pretty neat benefit. So back to the Thrive. The overall layout of it is quite easy to hold, quite rugged, not too heavy. It does not have a glass screen, so whether you would consider that to be a benefit or a drawback is up to you. But what it does have going for it is that removable battery, the removable back plate, which you can substitute with any color you so desire, as well as those full-size expansion slots. That's USB, SD, as well as HDMI. Next, we've got the ASUS ePad Transformer. So this guy's got micro SD, mini HDMI out, all the same kinds of general features that you'd expect from sort of a middle of the road tablet. However, it has the lowest price point, which is great because you can take that money you saved and you can throw it into the keyboard dock. So the keyboard dock latches on right here. It turns the ePad transformer into more like a laptop form factor. It actually latches on very, very securely. And the keyboard dock is not only a keyboard, but it's also an extended battery. So you can take this transformer and you can absolutely blow away every other tablet here with up to an additional four and a half hours of battery life from the keyboard dock itself. Finally, we've got the Galaxy Tab 10, or not finally, second to last, we have the Galaxy Tab 10.1. The Tab 10.1, due to its minuscule weight, beautiful screen, beautiful clear piece of glass, you can't see the interface on it at all, I would consider to be the most elegant of the Honeycomb Tegra 2 based tablets. It performs very, very well, feels very snappy during use, and was my favorite of the tablets we had today, except for the drawback that you don't have the micro SD expansion, so you have to actually buy one with larger capacity if you want to store more on it. So it's more expensive, that's life. And then also, you don't have that HDMI output that I did enjoy playing around with when I was doing my testing on the Zoom. So this is the Android Experience device. It has all the features you've come to expect with the 3.1 update. It includes support for micro SD expansion. You've also got your micro HDMI out on the bottom. And now, the battery life test was a funny one because even though the Zoom didn't win because the Tab 10.1 lasted longer, it was only because of a special battery saving mode that the Tab 10.1 lasted longer. So you could argue that the Zoom actually has the best battery life out of the Android tablets tested. And since you can't really compare the iPad 2 directly because it was not necessarily running the video in the same level of quality as the Android tablets, I would consider it the winner out of what we looked at today. So thank you for checking out this tablet roundup. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips for more great videos like this one.